Just to review where we're up to in the process of the Haggadah. So the first year we, we started with, we focused on the main ideas of the Seder night. In other words, what are we trying to come across? And we said, basically, it's a, we're thanking Hashem for, I mean, not thanking Hashem, but we're sort of celebrating two points. We're celebrating the fact that this is the night, the beginning of the process of us becoming Klal Yisrael. And the second thing was that this the Seder night, the Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, is the foundation for our Amuna. So it's the foundation for our Amuna. It's when Hashem revealed Himself in the world and He showed that He is down in the world and that He controls everything and He knows what's going on and that there's something called Navua and that everything's true. That was one point. And also that that's when we became Kali, so this is when we, we became Amisha. That was the first year. The second year, we discussed the idea of what's the point of going through the Seder, the Seder night if we know the story already, we know it already, and we said the idea is to make it more real, to make it um, hit home more, and that there's many things throughout the Seder that are put there, set up specially in order for it to um, connect to you. And that we went to the beginning of the Seder. Then we asked um, a question, which was, okay, fine, so Hashem took us out of time, but He also got us into the mess. So it's not like he just came in and saved the day. He, he put us into Mitzrayim. So why do we thank Hashem so much for taking us out of Mitzrayim if Hashem put us into Mitzrayim? So that we said that that's the part of that God on page 30, Mitzilo Evdei Vedazara, that we started off as Evdei Vedazara, and going down to Mitzrayim was part of the process of becoming Kali Sorry. Yeah, I thought it was the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> So, going down to Mitzrayim was part of the process of becoming Kali Yisrael. This is part of the process of being forged into a nation, and this is the concept called Kura Barzal. So that was the next part of the Agada. Just if you're going in the flow of the Agada, that's like the next part of the Agada. Then we started with Arami Eved Avi, which is on page 32, which is the Psukim. And this we said over from the Rambam that there's a special Indian of being Moshe Umarach in this Drash Parsha Zu, these four Psukim. And the reason simply is because this is where the story of going down to Mitzrayim is told. These four psukim, a lot of times people just read through the psukim, they don't really comprehend what they're saying 100%, but this is really the only place in the Haggadah where the story is. So the first pasuk is talking about Arami of Ravid, then it says a year in Mitzrayim, and they went down to Mitzrayim, the Yogar Shem, they lived there, and say, well, that, that was going down to Mitzrayim and turning into a nation of Klai Yisrael, growing uh, at such a rapid pace that they um, turned into Klai Yisrael. The second pasuk described the suffering and the, how they persecuted them and the propaganda against them and how they afflicted them. So that's what we're up to now. So basically, they, they're down in Mitzrayim, they've been enslaved, and now what happens next? We're up to the third pasuk on page 34. So this is what we're up to now. So this is like the second half of the story. The first pasuk was going down and growing and multiplying. The second pasuk was talked about the enslavement, which obviously these are things that try to elaborate on. When it says to elaborate on the story of Tzitzit Mitzrayim, these are the parts that you elaborate on. You elaborate on the suffering that they went through, and there's Midrashim that you could say over and things like that. So the, the page 34, that's the third pasuk. They cried out to Hashem, the God of our fathers, the Yishma Hashem is Kilenu, Hashem heard our voices, the Yaras Anyenu, he saw our affliction, the Es Amalenu and our burden, Vesla Chatsenu and our oppression. So now we go through, as we did before, every Pasuk here, what we do is we focus on each word and we show a place by the actual story of Mitzvah. This was the Parsha that was by Vidui Bikurim, which is in Devarim. When a person brings Bikurim, he tells over like sort of a history of Klai Yisrael that brought us to Eretz Yisrael. And we say over that, but then what we do is by each part, we show where it was in the story of Shemais, where it was over there, where it's a little bit of an elaborated version. So the first one is, Hashem We cried out to Hashem, the God of our fathers, Kamashanemar, like it says in the Pasuk, It was after many days, V'yomas Melch Mitzrayim, Melch Mitzrayim died, and then the Jews cried out from the Avaida of Yizaku, they cried out, the Taushavasim Ela Kim and Avaida, and their cries went up to Hashem from the Avaida. So that shows us that they cried out to Hashem. This is the first step in us going free, was us crying out to Hashem and davening. The Tfilas were the first step in us going free, and that's the first step in everything is Tfilah. 
The question is, one question we can ask, this is more of like a vert, but a question that we could ask is, why did they only cry out after the king died? died. And then they cried out from the Why did they wait till the king died? So there's a few answers given. One answer is the Ramban, the Dasakin, and the Chizkuni. So they said that when the king was alive, they kept thinking to themselves, okay, hopefully he's going to die. Hopefully he's going to die, and then everything will be better. That was like their big hope. So they would sit and like, wait, oh, hopefully the king's going to die. But then the king died, and nothing changed. The Xer still continued. Yeah, that one? Much better. With it. <laughs> the Xer still continued. So so then then they cried out to Hashem. So after the king died, and that was like their last hope, that they kept thinking was going to happen, it didn't work, so then they cried out to Hashem. That's one shot. Another shot is that when the king, when it says a Yamas, it doesn't mean he actually died. The Medrash says he had Saras. And he would bathe in the blood of 150 Jewish children every morning and every night. So they cried out because of this new gzair that they were killing their children. And the third shah, which is a gishmak shah from the Barbanel, is that they, w- they didn't allow them to cry. But when the king cried, there was like a public eulogy. Everyone cried for the death of the king. So all of a sudden, they were allowed to cry. So they went there and they also cried. But they cried not about the king. They cried for themselves. They cried... Hashem. That was the first time they gave them a chance to have like a public crying. So when the king died, that's when they cried. Not because the king died, but because that's when they had an opportunity to cry. It's an interesting shot from the Barbanel. I knew a person who had a birthday on the day that Stalin died. Uh, so you, they couldn't celebrate it. You, didn't celebrate you can't birthday. be happy when Stalin died. Oh, so it was the reverse of the story. Uh-huh. Yeah. You couldn't celebrate. It's like you were celebrating the death of Stalin. Uh-huh. For this, you would be killed. Right. Okay, so this is the opposite. It's the opposite. Right. Okay, so th- then it says like this. The next question, okay, fine. So that was, they cried out, and we just explained why they cried out after the king died. Then it says, the Yishma Hashem is Kaleinu. Hashem heard their cries. Kamashanema, the Yishma Lekim is not Kasham. Hashem heard their cries. The Yishka Lekim is Brisa, Shavram, Eshitzak, Vesyakov. And then he remembered, Hashem remembered the Brisa, Shavram, Eshitzak, Vesyakov. So just to point out, the Pasuk before, which was the Pasuk in before in Shemai says, Batal Shavasim Ela Akim Avedah, their, their tefillahs went up to Hashem. The next words are, Vayishma Ela Akim Asna Kasim, just if you skip the middle, because those are two Pesukim in a row in Shemai. So it says, Batal Shavasim Ela Akim, and then it says, Vayishma Ela Akim Asna Kasim, and then Vayishka Ela Akim. So this is the Seder of tefillah, right? If, it, if the tefillah already went up, so why does it say Vayishma Ela Akim? Then why do you hear if he, it already went up? So today was Rishchidosh, and on Yom Tov, we say the same thing. We say, Yala, this is the Seder of Tefillah. We say, Lekinu Lekinu Lekinu, Yala v'yavoi. It should go up, and it should come close. The Yagia, it should come, like, a closer kind of, it should reach you. The Yera, it should be seen. The Yera, it should be, it should be with Ratzah, and you should want it. The Yishma, and you should hear. The Yifka, and you should have, like, a remembrance. The Yizacha, and then you should have another remembrance. So this is, like, the Seder of Tefillah that it goes in, it gets closer and closer to Hashem, whatever that means exactly. So, it's the exact same state of Atal Shabbasim Lekim is Ya'ala, and then at a later point is Vayishma, and then comes Vayizka Lekim is Avraham Vasitzaka Vesyaka. Just interesting how it works, that that's the state of Tefillah. Then it says Vayaris and Yenu, Zu Prishas Derech Eretz. So, Kamashanam of Ya'ala Lekim is Bnei Yisrael, Vayeda Lekim. So, a few interesting things over here. So it says, first of all, Anyenu means affliction, and Prishas Derecheres means marital relations. They, weren't, they, they tried to stop them from having marital relations. The matter says, what they used to do was, they would say that if you go home and go live with your wives, then it's going to take longer tomorrow morning to come. So just stay out here in the fields. And they made them sleep in the fields, so they wouldn't let them go home. And for those who were here last week, we sit over the matters of the wives of the women of valor who they went and they would lift, take out the water and they would, in the water was fish and they would heat up the water and the fish and they would go out to the fields where the husbands were and they would, they would warm it up and they would bring it to their husbands and then they would live with them there and that's how they had children. That was the whole matter over there. But they were trying to stop them from their hearts. They were trying to stop them from living with their wives and that's how they tried to stop them. Um, also, when they made Xera to kill the children, so they stopped living with their wives in order not to have children, which Miriam stopped, and that's how Moshe Rabbeinu came. 
But anyway, so that's they they start them out marital relations. Where do you see that in the pasuk? Why does the word anyenu mean that? So inu oina oina is is a lesson of, of marital relations. The word oina v'yaris anyenu is a lesson of marital relations. Derech eretz is also a lesson of marital relations. They have by light v'ish ein v'aretz love elenu k'derech kol aretz. It's also a lesson of marital relations. But where do you see it in this pasuk? It says v'yaris elikim es bnei yisrael Hashem saw bnei yisrael v'yed elikim and Hashem knew. Where do you see over there anything about marital relations? So one shot is because it says Vayeda, but a simpler shot is because he saw, it doesn't say what it was. That's the way of the Torah. It doesn't say what he saw. Or what did, what's something that only Hashem could see and something that only Hashem could know? It's only something that's a, something in private that no one else knows. So only Hashem, Vayar Hashem, it says. Vayar Lekim is Nesel, Vayeda Lekim and Hashem knew. Only Hashem knew. No one else could tell what was going on in private, but Hashem was able to tell. And also maybe a lesson of Ayeda. But it, the, what the Rishonim say is that what's something that only Hashem knows about and something only Hashem sees, that's private things. That's the children, the sons. Any son who's born will be thrown into the river. Keep the, women, keep the girls alive. So the Shailas, why did Paro try to keep the girls alive? Why not... Um, why not kill? Why kill the men only? So the matter says, "Matzar power la kaim in the kavus." Why did power keep alive in the kavus? Kachal yoyimim. Nomes has zcharim will kill the men. V'nikach in the kavus the nashim, and then we'll take the women to be wives. Mitzrim hoy stufim bezima. They wanted to have more women. They wanted to have more more girls to have for their stufim bezima. So if they kill the men, then they'll have the women. That's what the Medrash says. And that's why it says, V'chol Abbas Tuchayim. That's why we bring them V'chol Abbas Tuchayim. We're not trying to say something good about Parah. Specifically, V'chol Abbas Tuchayim. That's also bad. He wanted, the, he wanted to kill the men, and he wanted to keep the women alive. Specifically, because it was true for Zima. Why is Amalainu Banim? Because a person's work in, in the world is, right, we all know, a person's work in the world is for his children. Taking care of them, right, tuition, <laughs> and everything else, right? That, so Amalenu is born. Okay, Vesachatzenu, our oppression, Zuad Chak, that's the pressure. What does it mean, pressure? So the Pasuk says, Vahanoiksim Otsim, Lamar Kolo Masecha. The Noiksim would, would pressure them, saying, finish your work. There was, a, there was a pressure, they were always rushing them, rushing them, rushing them, pressuring them, fill your quota, fill your quota. There was a pressure that was constantly on them. And that's what it says also. I see the oppression that they're oppressing in them. So, a question that one could ask at this point is okay, so they cried out to Hashem. Hashem heard their cries. They went up. Yalav, Yavi, right? It went up. It got close to them. He heard their cries. And he saw these three things. Why these three things? There's plenty of things, right? They were beating them. They worked hard. They, there's plenty of things that, that, I mean, they were going through terrible suffering. Why did he see these three things? Precious their acharets, separating them from their wives, the fact that they killed their sons, and the pressure. Why these three things? So, the Barbanel explains, I'm not sure if I saw it anywhere else, if anyone else asked this question, but the Barbanel explains that the shot is that these three things destroy a person emotionally. Um, and he says that hard labor and beatings, when someone works hard and he gets beaten, that hurts terribly, but to destroy someone emotionally is to destroy his family life, to harm his children, and to make him work without any break. Just pressure, 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 pressure. And no breaks, no breaks, no breaks. That, those three things. That's what he says. Those three things break a person psychologically, emotionally, and that's why Hashem saw those three things specifically. Not sure about the answer, but the question is definitely an important... Uh, that why these three things specifically? That's one answer. That these three things are like a higher level. To, to ruin someone's family life, to, to go against someone's children and to pressure them without any break, those three things destroy a person psychologically. So that's that Pasuk. So that's the Pasuk of them crying out and Hashem now, at this point, Hashem turning his, letting the Tfilos come up, listening to the Tfilos, remembering Avraham, Mitzvah, and Yaakov, the Bris, and now he's ready to um, get started. Now Hashem's ready to um, listen to the Tfilos and take us out. So first we went down, then we went through suffering, then we cried out, Hashem listened to our tefillas, he saw our suffering, and now he's ready to take us out. Okay? Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim, 
Biyad Chazaka with a strong hand, Uzoy Natuya, the outstretched arm, with a Moyer Goto, with great awe, with oysters, with signs, with emotion, with wonders. So go through each part. Vayetzeinu Hashem and Mitzrayim, Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim, Loi de Malach, Loi de Sarv, Loi de Shliach, not through any of these three things, Al Kashparchu Bechweir of Atma, Hashem himself took us out. How do you see that from the Pasuk? Because the Pasuk before, if you look in the Pasuk before, they're trying to explain it. It says, Hashem heard our voices. So, you don't have to say again, right? It's, if we're talking about regular people, so you say, and David heard his cries, and David responded, right? And just say, and he responded. You don't have to say, you just say, and he took us out of Mitzrayim. Who, who took us out of Mitzrayim? You look back, the two words before, it says, a few words before, it says, Hashem. You don't have to keep saying Hashem. Why does it say, Vayishma Hashem, Vayitzenu Hashem? Because it was Hashem specifically. And, Lo Yedei Malach, Lo Yedei Sarf, Lo Yedei Shliach, Al Kadosh Baruch Hu B'choyed of Atma. These three things are, I don't, I don't know exactly what they are, but there's, there's, certain, there's like three types of Malachim. There's a Malach, a, a Sarf, and then the Shliach is, one side is it's Metachin, it's like a higher level Malach. So there was like, each one's an exclusion. El Kodesh Baruch Hu B'chuvay Devat Hashem Himself took us out. Shenemar Vavarti Be'eretz Mitzrayim Belayla Is that I will pass through Mitzrayim Vavarti is I will pass through Mitzrayim So it's exclusion again I will pass through the Hikesi And I will hit Kol B'chor Be'eretz Mitzrayim Me'adam Ha'am Who B'chor Be'eretz Mitzrayim Me'eretz Mitzrayim I will do Shvatim Ani Hashem I am Hashem Wasn't there a Malach Amav Wasn't there a Malach Amav there At the time? So the question is What was the Malach Amav doing there? The question is, why do they have to put blood on their, uh, on their, right? They put blood by the Karim Pesach so that the Mashchus shouldn't get in. So why was there a Mashchus? Why was there a Malachim there? So there's a number of different answers given. Um, there's a lot of different answers given. One of the answers given is that... Not only the heads of households were killed, also other people were killed, and that was through the Malachim Avos. Another side is that it was for the animals. Uh, no, the animals is here too. There's a number of different shots given for that. I don't want to get. I'm not going to get into that so much. I don't remember that much better. But but um, there's a number. That's a side question. But Hashem Himself did Makas Bucharis Himself. Even though it says Leitin and Mashas, that's like a famous question, and everyone tries to give answers to. That. And then we bring, and then we explain, then we make the dukim ourselves, which is interesting. It's the only time we do it. Vavarti beretz and shan belayla is that anivle malach. That's anivle malach. Vavarti is I, so it's me and not a malach. He kesi kol b'chamer and shan anivle shaf. Again, a diuk, a miut, a me and not a shaf. The whole came and shan as a shvatim. Anivle a shlich, I not a shlich. Ani Hashem, ani uvle yachar. There's no other. What's uvle yachar? I mean, what would I have thought? We already excluded a malach, a shaf. And a shliach. So, who, what else would it be? So, the Maharal explains it means the koychos I don't know exactly what that is, but the koychos atuma. Maybe that's a question. Maybe. What is it mean? Aniu v'loyachar. It's the Maharal explains the koychos atuma. I think there's another answer that I don't remember. Okay, biyad chazaka. Fine. So. One, no, one, everything you have two psukim. One's in Dvarim, and one's over there by, um, we bring the Pasuk over there by Shemais in the, in the actual place where it's longer, more detailed. Everything's repeated, and this is just a repetition. What the person says in Dvarim is just a summary, a repetition of what happened then by Shemais. So never ask the question, why does it say it twice? That's a, some, a, this is what you should say. These are the words you should say. No, but to say that the Dach Hashem, that took him out. Yeah, because you have to point it out. Just like over there it was Dafka Hashem, you too, when you say it over in the Pasuk, should say that it was Dafka Hashem and not and not, nobody else. It's, it's an important point that Hashem, it was so important to Hashem to take us out of Mitzrayim that He Himself came down to Mitzrayim and took us out and didn't send the Malach Hasar for a He Himself came down to Mitzrayim. That's like a covered for us. Kibyar Chazaka, with a strong hand, Zua Dever, this is Dever. Meshanemar, Hine Yad Hashem Haya B'miknecha The hand of Hashem was in the animals of Hashem Asada that were in the field B'shusim B'chamayim B'gmalim B'bakar B'chayim Dever Kavimah There was a strong Dever 
Let's just see a few things here, and then we'll go back and explain it. So, then it says, This is the sword. His sword was stretched out in his hand. What, what does that apostle have to do with anything? So apostle can give a yamim, and it says that his sword was drawn out, outstretched over Yerushalayim. Well, that has nothing to do with anything. The only thing that it does is show us that when it says the word Netuya, it says Cherev. So by us, when it says Zoya Netuya, you want to know what Zoya Netuya means? What does Zoya Netuya mean? It doesn't tell us. How do I know what Zoya Netuya means? So we have to look somewhere else where it says the word Netuya, and over there it says Cherev. What's the drasha? So, just to understand what's going on, if you read this simply, it makes no sense. What does that have to do with anything? So, this is telling us that the word Netuya means a cherev. And that's how we know over here it means a cherev. So, this is a little bit of a different passage than other psukim, because this is not showing us the place in Shemois where it was. It was never mentioned in Shemois cherev. One of the questions I'm going to ask is, what's the cherev? What does it mean, sword? What, what is that? There was no maka called sword. What does it mean that there was a sword? And even though I will attempt to give answers, but I do not have like a thousand percent clarity in this answer either. Like, I'm, I'll tell you a couple different answers, but Zuachar, it's definitely not a simple thing. This is like Zuachar, what's Kher? Kharbun what, what, what is that? What's going on? There was no, doesn't seem to have been any sword by um, Yitzhak Mitzrayim. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Vimoyer Gado, with awesome, um, great awe, Zugil Shechina. This is the revealing of the Shechina. Kama Shenemar, Oya Nisha Lekim Lover, Lekachos Legoi Mekerav Goi. Has a God ever attempted to take out one nation from another nation? Bemasais, Baosais, Vimoshim. Right, with um, sign, trial, signs, wonders of Macham of Yad Chazaka, of Zoy Natuya, of Amaram Gedolim, and open wonders, Kechol Asher Asher Lacham Hashem Lekechem in Mitzrayim, Leinecha. Like everything that Hashem did in Mitzrayim in front of your eyes. So, how do we see from here that Moir Gadol means Gilu Yishchina? We're going to ask another question what does Gilu Yishchina exactly mean? But how do we see from here it means Gilu Yishchina? Because the la the Pasha Pshad is because the last word is Asha Asal Kham Hashem al Kaikam bin Mitsaim Li A Necha in front of your eyes. That means that it was revealed. That means that Hashem revealed himself and it says over there in that same passage, we Mayroim Gadilam. So it says Mayor Godo, we we see from there that there was a Gilu Shina. When the word Mayor Godo means there was a Gilu Shina. Okay? So Mayor Godo comes is because it says Maram Gadol, it says by Nacho, so we see that by Mitzrayim there was a Gilu Shechina. Uva Oisos, Zeh Amata, this is the Mata of Moshe Rabbeinu Kamash and Amar, that's Amata, Zeh Tikach Biyadecha, Asher Tasha Bois Oisos, to do the Oisos. So the Oisos is the Mata, Uva Moshe, Zeh Adam. Kamash and Amar, and this again is similar to the other Pasuk of Zoyin Etuya, Zuachar, where it has nothing to do with anything. Kamash and Amar, Venasati Moshe Meshmai Varet, Dan the Ish with Simrus Asham, right? So if anyone ever wondered, right, you take your pinky, you put in Dam the Ish with Simrus Asham, right? You, you take out some wine. What is Dam the Ish with Simrus Asham? What does it mean or what does that have to do with anything? The answer is it means blood, fire, and columns of smoke and has nothing to do with anything. It's a Pasuk in Yoel and it's talking about the future Gula. When, when the Mitzvah Shem Mashiach is going to come, some people actually, it's talking about flying grasshoppers or something. I don't know if anyone wants to go look over there. It's interesting. Some people say that it's talking about modern day, uh, like, uh, w airplanes and bombs, blood and ash and fiery smokes. I don't know. I've heard that from, uh, if you want to look over there and yell. But the point is, it says, Dam Vesh Hashem is It has nothing to do with anything. It's only because it says the words, and the Moifsim by Shemayim Varech, says Moifis, and it says Dam. So we see that by us, when it says Amaisim, it means Dam. Other than that, it has nothing to do with anything. Some Sidurim, some Haggadahs, and this one also, but at least there's the two dots afterwards, it's very unclear what the words Dam Vesh or Simus Asim. Some of them, it's like on a next page. You just turn the page, you just say Dam Vesh or Simus Asim, whatever, whatever tune you do. And you're like, if you think about it, what is Dam Vesh or Simus Asim? Why do we even take our finger if it has nothing to do with anything? 
Okay, so what's it referring to? It's referring to something in Yoel. It has nothing to do with the existence of Yoel. Yoel is a, a safer. Safer in Tanakh. So why, would, why does he do that? Why does that? It's brought in here, the same reason it was brought in before. It's brought, it's a limud. It's a limud, just like any gemar. It's called, it's uh, called Xer Shav. It says the word Moisim over here. It says the word Moisim over there. Just like over there it's talking about Dam. Also over here the word Moisim is talking about Dam. That's a limud. It's the same thing with Yerushalayim? That's the same thing. So in it too, it's Yerushalayim. It has nothing to do with your What does your have to do with your son? What does your son have to do with your son? I'm trying to say. Nothing. Because it says the word Natuya, it says the word Cherev. It says the word Moisim, it says the word Dam. That's it. I don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> That's Pasha Pshat. There's, I mean, maybe people say other Pshat then, but I, I don't know of any other Pshat. At least not anything I know of. So, why do we do Dam Ve'esha Simasashen? The reason is because the Kais is a Kais of Brach. Just like we raised it up by the Hisha we raised it up by Shwai Hamas, we raised it up by like happy parts. So it's a Kaisal Bracha. So when we're talking about punishments, even though they're punishments for Goyim, take out a little bit of wine. That's the idea. Spill a little bit of wine or take your finger, your pinky or your finger or whatever. People do different things. So so even though Dan Vesh is talking about in the future, but it's talking about punishments to our enemies. It's also a punishment so we take out a little bit of blood, even though it has nothing to do with anything. So that's the Limudim. So we have, this, this part is one of the most confusing pages. I'm sorry to say, if you pay attention, it's very confusing. But that at least clarifies a couple of things. So what I'm talking about is uh, That's what we're going to ask now. Okay, so let's get clear. So we just focused on five things. We focused on Yar Chazakas, Dever, Zoyne, Tuyas, Cherev, Moyer Garos, Gilu, Shechina, Oisus is the Mata, and the Moisim is the Dam. So, what is going on over here? I mean, try to get in context. What's the Pasha? If you turn back the page, we're reading a Pasha. Yitzhina Hashem Mitzam, Hashem took us out of Mitzam. Yar Chazaka, Dever. What did Hashem take us out of Mitzam with? Dever. What else? Zoyne, Tuyas, Cherev. He took us out with a Cherev. What else? Moyer Garos, Gilu, Shechina. Oysis, what's that? With the matter of Moisim Zadam. It took us out with the Dam. What, what's special about these things? What, what is it telling us? What, what are we saying over here? It's, it's a confusing point. Another question that people ask is, it says Dever and it says Dam. Why? It seems to be talking about the Maka of Dam and the Maka of Dever. If it's talking about the Maka of Dam and the Maka of Dever, first of all, it's out of order. And second of all, why these two Makas? Why not other Makas? So, <clears throat> I like to say Pshat. I don't remember where I saw it, but just to make the whole Pshat maybe have a context, it goes like this. What does it mean? Why is Dever called Yad Hashem? And what is Cherev? What is the Cherev? What does it mean, Cherev? So a simple possibility for this is like this that we're not talking about specific makas. What we're talking about is, we're trying to say, Hashem. Hashem himself took us out, right? Hashem himself took us out. Not only that, but the third one was, Gilu Yishchina. That not only did he take us out himself, but he even revealed himself when he took us out. We're trying to show the, 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 the awesomeness of what Hashem did for us. He himself came down and took us out. And he revealed himself and took us out. And he took us out using different aspects. So, when... One side is like this. What does it mean, Yad Hashem? Yad Hashem means when you see animals die. So nowadays we know there's something called bacteria and, and sicknesses. and right. But as far as you're watching, all of a sudden there's a lot of animals alive. Within seven days, boom, all the animals are dead. What happened? Nothing. There was no hail coming down. There was no wild animals. There was no... Nothing happened. They just died. So... If you're a long time ago, what would you call that? The hand of God. They died by the hand of God. What else killed them? They just were... It's like God killed them himself. There was no agent. There was no sword. Sometimes when you kill something, you kill it yourself. And sometimes you kill something with a sword. In other words, you use something else. What it means by a sword over here... This is one shot. I'm not saying it's the only shot. But what it means by a sword over here is it means that it wasn't Yad Hashem. It means he sent something. He sent wild animals. He sent hail. He sent darkness. He's, right? Dever is called Yad Hashem. And that's why it says in the Pesach, 
Hine, Yad Hashem, Hoya B'Mednecha, the hand of Hashem will strike your cattle. Nothing with a severe endeavor. Nothing's going to happen. They're just going to die. That's called Yad Hashem. So we're saying that Hashem killed the Mitzrayim with different facets of, of, of being able to harm them. He harmed them. One type of way was a direct Yad Hashem, and another type of way was through the Cher, by sending things, by sending his different types of swords. So then the passage goes like this. So, Hashem himself took a sign of Mitzrayim. He himself came down. No Malach, no Shliach, no Saraf. Nobody else. He himself came down and took us out of time. And he took us out of time with all the powers available to him. He took us out of time with his hand, where the animals just died. It just Things just happened without seeming anything. And um, then his joined it too, is the Kharev. With his sword, he used all his different agents that he could use, all different types of agents. That's what I'm sorry. Remember Godel, and he revealed himself himself. Uva Isis Zamata. What does it mean, it's the Mata? The is that dam. What does it mean? Moshe is dam. So the mata Hashem said is signs. When Moshe Rabbeinu came to Mitzrayim, he used the mata for signs. He threw the mata down. It turned into a stick, and then it turned back into a snake, and then it ate the other snakes. That was a sign that Hashem is real. That was a sign, and he also used the mata to perform other signs. So the mata was like was Hashem revealed Himself. He revealed Himself, and He gave us signs, and He showed us with signs. Uva Moshe. Moisim is wonders. What's wonders? Why Dam, specifically? So, every Maka had in it many wonders. But Dam seems to have had more of a specific wonder. When a, This is what some people say already over here. This is not my own, but this is what other people say that. When a Mitzri would drink the blood, would drink the water, it would turn it to blood. He passed it to a Jew, it would turn it to water. So, there's a famous, like, the way they say the story, you know, imagine you're a Mitzri at the time. And uh, one day you get up and start to smell something weird. Everything smells like blood. There's blood dripping. It's blood all over the place. So you, you want to drink. You're thirsty. So you uh, pick up some water and start blood. So you, you see your, your Jewish slave sitting there next to you. So you say to him, okay, you, well, you have water? Okay, give me the water. Let me drink your water. You take it, turns to blood. Pass it back, turns to water. Take it, turns to blood. And this wasn't just blood. It wasn't red water. It was real blood, thick blood, sick. It, it makes you sick. You can't just drink it. It makes you sick. It makes you whatever. It wounds the clothing, everything. So then you say, okay, let's drink from it together. So let's both drink from it together. We're both drink from it at the same time. You drink from it at the same time. He's drinking water. He's drinking blood. Then he bought it off him. Oh, now you could have water. When you buy it off him, now you could have water. So. They say that the dam was a particular moifus. If you bought from a, if the if the mitzvah bought from a yid, then then he could have water. Yeah. How else do you think they lived? Who? The mitzvah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But not only that, but a sham had a kun, so it's a big deal. So he'll buy it off him. He'll force the Jew to sell it to him for whatever price he wants. So he'll tell the Jew, I'll beat you up if you don't sell it to me for a penny, right? So it wouldn't turn to water unless he bought it off him for the proper price. Was and since supply and, demand, <laughs> supply and demand was probably very high. <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah. So, so Isis, the Mata is just a, a way that Hashem revealed Himself. He revealed Himself also and He gave us signs he, through the Mata. He gave us Moisim, which is representative of that as the Dam. But then the Pasuk is telling us like this. The whole point of this whole page is telling us one thing. Hashem Himself took us out of Mitzrayim. No Malach, no Sarv, no Shliach. He himself came down. And he came down with all the powers available to him. He used his Yad Hashem. He used his Cherub, his different swords. He revealed himself. He made signs for us to see that we could actually see him. He made wonders that we could see him even more. That's what the whole Pasuk is telling us. That Hashem himself took us out. And he took us out with many different forces. And he revealed himself and he gave us signs and he gave us wonders. And that happens to be Pasuk Shad in the Pasuk also then. I mean, if you learn like that, then it's not ruining Pasuk Shah and the Pasuk, because if you read the Pasuk, that's what the Pasuk says. We attain Hashem at time, Hashem took us out of time, Biyad Chazaka with a strong hand, it was very natu, with the Austria charm, with Muir Gadol, with great awe, with Oisei Sermaisen, with signs and wonders. That's what it's telling us, that Hashem took us out with, with all these awesome things. If you translate it to Dever, Cherev, Mata, and Dam, it's kind of limiting the Pasuk, if anything. Right? It's trying to tell us Hashem took us out with all these amazing things. And you're saying, see, why is it those things? The answer is these are just different types of showings of those things. So we're just showing Yad Chazaka, 
that was Dever. Where was the Yad Chazaka? Was Dever. Where do you have a Zoya and a Tuya where he used an agent? That that was all the things he used an agent. Where do you have Mergado? There was a Gilush Shina. What's the Isis? By the Mata there was Isis. Where was the Mason? By the Dam there was Mason. Good? One Pasha Psalm. Another Psalm by the Cherv, just a couple of other Psalms by the Cherv. Another Psalm by the Cherv is Makas Bukharis, that, that he used the sword for Makas Bukharis. I'm not sure exactly why Makas Bukharis is called Cherv, but they say the word Cherv is called Makas Bukharis. Another Psalm is that by the Makas Bukharis, the Medr says that it was preordained. So Moshe Rabbeinu told them about Makas Bukharis. So the Bukharim, oh, you crazy. <laughs> You're nuts. Let him out. Let him out. I don't want to die. The last nine plagues, Moshe Rabbeinu said is going to happen. They happened. Moshe Rabbeinu tells us, tomorrow night at Chatzos, I'm going to come and kill all the Bechoros. What do you think they all did? It was an uprising. And there was a civil war. That night. And there was a Chur. That night. And, and they killed each other. I think some people say that's where the Malachamavis was. Well, you think a Mashchist that you were asking? By those swords where they were fighting against each other, and many, many, many more people were killed. That was the khar. Some people said that was why it was killed. Um, no, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. What it is. Fine. So that's one shot in the pasuk. Now, Dover Acher, a different shot. We're going back to the pasuk. Hashem took us out with the Yad Chazaka Zayin Tuyim Or Gadol Oisim Moshim. What are all those things mean? So we dash them like this. The Yad Chazaka Shtayim. The Yad Chazaka means he used two powers. Uzayin and Tuyim Shtayim, another two powers. The Moshim Gadol, another two powers. But Oisim Shtayim, another two powers. The Moshim Shtayim, another two powers, or two things. Elu Eser Makos Shevi Akash Bocha Metzim Mitzayim. Elohim. The Yitzin Hashem Again Mitzayim. With ten things, what were the ten things? The ten Makos. The Elohim. Uh, one of the things you're supposed to spend time on is the Makas. To, that's where Hashem revealed himself. Why do we give uh, why do we give this to Tzachadash Bachav? So there's many answers. One of them is that this was written on the Mata. Another side is like this. There was actually three types of Makas. There's three stages to the Makas, and there's many different shots that explained what the three stages were, but all of them started off with a warning by the river, and the next one, when Par was going to the bathroom, Par proclaimed himself God, and he hid that he went to the bathroom, and all of them start off in the morning, when Par was going to the bathroom, Moshe Rabbeinu went to him, that was the first Makkah in each set. The second Makkah in each set was just Stama warning, and the third Makkah came without any warning, in all three sets. It was just set to it. Then each one was for a different purpose. Different forces of nature. <coughs> um, I don't have time to go through. There's only five minutes that I want to get into some other things. But if you look at the Rishenim over here, in the Psukim over here, you'll see that there's, there's different things that the Makas are coming to prove. But the point that I'm just trying to make out is that there was three sets of Makas. And each set was coming to prove a different point. Um... So uh, would you say like each set describes like the three things? Like yeah, each no. hand, the outstretch. No, no, no. Th that was a division of five. Maybe that's a different way of dividing the market. But that's five sets of two. But I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I just want to get into a couple more things. So basically, the Omer, on the Yom they had fifty. It says Etzban says yeah. Let's skip that one. He says each Maka was four Makas. Rabbi Kiva says, each, turn the page, each maka was five makas. What's this concept of each maka was four makas, each maka was five makas? What does that mean? So, it's simple. If I come over to you and I beat you, like really hard, I beat or I hit you really hard. So, that, it really does a few things. First of all, it hurts. It just hurts. Second of all, it could cause damage. Third of all, it could cause a sickness in the body. In other words, when someone hurts someone, it has other effects. So each maka had different parts to it. Let's take the frogs, for example. So, or dam. Let's start with dam. By dam, first of all, there was a terrible stench. Second of all, all the fish died. So it, it destroyed a lot of their um, things to eat. Third of all, the whole land was fertilized by the Nile, which all turned to dam. Fourth of all, they had nothing to drink. Right? So it smelled terrible. The fish died. Their, their, their lands had nothing, they had nothing to drink, so they were thirsty the whole day. Fifth of all, they had to buy off the Jews, so they had to spend lots of money. They, they couldn't 
they couldn't eat anything because everything contains water in it, and that water also turned to blood. Um, their their god, the Nile, was also their god. So that's what it means. The came in time as a Shvatim. Their gods also had Shvatim. Their idols were burnt up, but one of th- that's included in Dam was that the Nile was their idol. And there's many more aspects to this. So when it says there was four or five Chalakim, that's one of the things. By Tzvardeya, there was terrible croaking the whole day. The noise drove them crazy. Second of all, they couldn't sleep because they were jumping around in their beds. They couldn't eat because any time they opened their mouths, they jumped in and in their food, and they jumped into the food, they jumped into the ovens. Um, when, I forgot, there's like a whole... Each maka, so I have a safer at home, it's called Matame HaShulchan. It goes through all the makas, how Zmira Kenegemira, and every part of each maka. But the point is that every maka had many elements to it. And if you think about it, you could think about any maka, how it hurt them in many different ways. Kept them inside, kept them outside, like, it just harmed them in more than just, it wasn't just one thing. They were real makas, they were terrible makas. Okay, just to go a little further because the next year is on over the Lulay so then we say like this: Kama So we are now finished with the psukim, and we're now finished. Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim with with these either with these five different um, either He took us out of Mitzrayim Him Himself with with uh, with His with His hand and with all His agents and with the Gilu Shchina and with signs and with wonders, or He took us out with these ten plagues, and now we're start to thank Hashem. We say, Kama Malas Teres Malkum Leinu. What does it mean, Dayenu? So everyone asks the question, What does it mean, Dayenu? If Hashem wouldn't have given us the Torah, would have been enough. How could it be? If Hashem wouldn't have given us Eretz Yisrael, would have been enough. How could it be? It would be enough without Eretz Yisrael, without the Torah, without the Beis Hamikdash. How could that be? So the Pasuk Shad is the word Dayenu doesn't mean it would have been enough. It doesn't mean okay, stop there, take us out of Mitzrayim, and um, leave us in the midbar with nothing to eat, with no man. That's not what it means. What it means is. If Hashem would have only done this, Dayenu, it would have been enough for us to thank Him. Dayenu means each one of these things would have been enough for us to have a whole Yom Tov of Pesach and a whole Seder just to thank Him. For each one of these things. And the point is, if for those who are here for the Shir about, from the Muftam Elio, the point is that when a person does, or when Hashem does so many things for us, the nature is that it, it sort of gets lost in the crowd. Every did so many things, you say thank you. But no, each thing is deserving of its own thank you. Each thing is deserving. So either it's an Hashem would have taken us out and not killed their gods, that would have been enough. And if Hashem would have killed their go- destroyed their gods, I'm sorry, not punished them, taking us out would have been enough. And if he would have punished them, that was also not done their gods. And each thing would have been enough for us to, to thank him. But of course we needed all of them and, and whatever Hashem did was important. There's 15 milas over here, which is connected Shira Milas. There's 15 Shira Milas, which is 15 milas up to the, the up to the steps of the basement. Midrash. There's a, some sort of concept of 15 by milas, and there's 15 milas that we see over here. The first five are I forgot how it goes, but I think the first five are <coughs> leaving our saw The next five are in the midbar, and then I, I remember, but. At the end, we say this is the culmination. We start off with Maschal Beginus. What was the Gnus? Mitzil Oiv Avodah We start off with we Oiv Avodah Zara. And now Hashem brought us to, uh, to, to his Avodah. Where's the Messiah Mishrach? Here. He gave us the money, he gave us Shabbos, he gave us our Sinai, he gave us the Torah, he gave us the So he gave us the Beis of This is the end. This is the culmination of, of the Shrach. This is the culmination of the story. This is the end of the story is. Torah Eretzah based on Bechir, based on Mikdash, and then we put it all together because the nature is first you focus on each thing individually, and then Alachas Kavu Mekame even more than that. Toyva Kfulo Mufapelas Aleinu. So I tell you, Mitzvah Mazman 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 Mazman. He did all those things. So first you look at each thing individually and you thank Hashem, and then you throw it all together, and even more so when when you put it all together. Okay, next week we'll talk about Pesach Matzah Mar. Yeah. Uh, yeah.